Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you today on this Pentecost celebration is taken from the second scripture reading that Pastor Lee just read for us. I share with you today at verse 4. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, when was the last time that you had a hard time understanding someone? Happens all the time, doesn't it? I mean, there are many times when we have a hard time understanding what people are trying to say. Did you know that I read recently that there are over 7,000 languages in this world? That's a lot. And there is one word that is common in every language. It is the word ha, huh, spelled H-U-H, -H, ha. Huh. People, when they can't understand one another, they just say ha. Huh. It's one of those words that in every language, it shows that you're confused about what the person is trying to say. Well, it's important that people all over the world could understand one another, isn't it? If you've ever traveled into a foreign country, you know what I'm talking about. It makes it so much nicer when you can understand one another. Well, in the word of God before us today, this group of believers in Jesus were praying. They were praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, as they were praying for the Holy Spirit to come, they really didn't understand what that was all about. They really didn't understand what the power of the Holy Spirit was going to be. Let me introduce you to a German word today. The German word is pronounced Sitzfleisch. Sitzfleisch literally means sitting flesh. And this word Sitzfleisch refers to when you have a job to do, you don't stop until the job is finished. Sitzfleisch means that you're going to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Well, this group of believers here today, they were committed to sits flesh. They were committed to sitting and waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then it happened. A sound like a violent wind came from heaven. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there came to be these little tongues of fire that came to rest on each of their heads. And then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Wow. This was one of the greatest moments in human history. This was the beginning of the Christian church. This was the beginning of the Great Commission where Jesus was going to be telling people to go and make disciples of all nations. This was also going to be the countdown to when Jesus was going to come back to this earth at the end of the world. Well, today I want to focus on these words. All of the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. So let me ask you, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? What does that mean, to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, first of all, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means that the Holy Spirit is filling you with the mind of God. The Holy Spirit helps us to better understand what God wants for us in this world. The Old Testament prophet Joel spoke about this to the people of Judah 800 years before Jesus was born. And this is what Joel wrote. God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I'm going to pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. You know, I wonder what kind of visions 
and what kind of dreams we would have in this world if we had the mind of God. I wonder what kind of dreams and visions we might have if we could see things through the eyes of God. I wonder if we would see God's love and God's peace and God's justice in this world. I wonder if we would see God's hope for a bright future in heaven. In 2020, a 13-year-old boy named Abraham was diagnosed with aplastic anemia. He had to undergo radiation treatments and he had to have a bone marrow transplant to help with this condition. Now, the Make-A-Wish Foundation came to Abraham and said they would grant him whatever he wished. Well, Abraham, he didn't wish something for himself. No. Abraham wished that he would be able to feed some hungry people in his own hometown of Jackson, Mississippi. Well, the Make-A-Wish Foundation granted his request. They granted his wish. In 2021, some of the volunteers from Make-A-Wish Foundation and Abraham, they went and they fed 80 homeless people. They did this once a month for the entire year. In an interview, Abraham said, I am a person of hope, and I believe in a God of hope. So whenever you have troubles in your life, remember that you have a big God. This is what the Holy Spirit did for that group of believers in Jesus on that first Pentecost. The Holy Spirit here reminded them that they had a big God. The Holy Spirit helped them to be able to see the world with God's eyes. The Holy Spirit helped them to be able to see God's love and God's peace and God's hope for this world. Secondly, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means that the Holy Spirit was going to help these people to be able to share the truth about God with power. The people in Jerusalem on that first Pentecost, they all got to hear about Jesus in their own language. It was quite a miracle. They all got to hear about Jesus in their own language. What did they hear? They heard that Jesus not only died, but that he rose from the dead. He didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And then they heard that Jesus was willing to forgive all their sins that Jesus could take away their fear of dying, that Jesus could give them the hope of an eternal life with him in heaven through their trust in him. They all got to hear this life-changing news. And the Bible tells us 3,000 of them became believers in Jesus that day. Wow. Wow. In 1954, a man named Paul Freed he began a Christian radio program on a radio station in Morocco, Africa. His goal was to try to get as many people as he could in Africa to hear the good news about Jesus. Well, there was a man named Maloji, whose wife and whose daughter had died. And he was in a hopeless state. He was about ready just to commit suicide. He was giving up on life. A friend of came to him and told him about this Christian radio program and invited him just to listen. Well, Imo, he did that. Emoji did that. He listened to the radio program and he found that there was some hope for his life. He found that he could have hope of a bright future ahead in heaven through his trust in Jesus. And he became a believer in Jesus as his savior from sin and death on that very first Pentecost. God sent his Holy Spirit to a group of believers in Jesus. The Holy Spirit filled them with the mind of God. The Holy Spirit filled them with the power to be able to share the good news of Jesus with others. The Holy Spirit 
help them to lead many people to know Jesus and to be in heaven today. God wants to do that very same thing with you and me. You see, you have the Holy Spirit in your life today. The Holy Spirit is the one who helped you to be able to accept Jesus as your Savior from sin and death. It's the Holy Spirit that has given you love and peace and hope for your life. In a way, the Holy Spirit is God living inside of you. And the Holy Spirit is giving you power to be able to share this great news about Jesus with others around you. I encourage you today to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life because the Holy Spirit's there. The Holy Spirit is there to help you just like he helped that group of believers in Jesus years ago. Take the power of the Holy Spirit today and use that power to lead more people to get to know Jesus, to lead more people to eternal life in heaven. God bless us all as we do that together. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.